Hello. First tonight, the top-of-the-range cars stolen to order but seized by the police as they were about to be shipped out of the country. In all, 73 cars were discovered in containers at the port of Felixstowe. The police say burglars stole from their victims' houses before taking the car keys and their cars too. Our reporter Gareth George is at Felixstowe now. Gareth. Well, across the estuary, you should be able to see the lights of the port of Felixstowe. It's incredibly busy. It handles around two million containers a year. That's about one third of the UK's entire container trade. Now, police and customs have to be ever vigilant. And we've just had details of their latest operation over the last few weeks. They've searched about 300 containers and they found 73 stolen vehicles. The police provided us with some pictures of those stolen vehicles and we're not talking about any old cars here. We're talking high value 4x4s, makes including Mercedes, Audi, BMW, worth £50,000 or more, some of them. Now, police believe they were stolen to order. In some cases, they say a burglary took place. The keys of the car were taken in that burglary, and then those cars were driven away and ended up in containers here. So, Gareth, where exactly were these cars destined for? Well, the police believe that once uh, they were here at Felixstowe, they were then going to be shipped out to East Africa, but they say that East Africa was only a staging post. From there, they believe they were going to go on to Pakistan and India. Now, this police operation was led by the East of England's Regional Intelligence Unit, and we spoke to Mark Lay, the DCI who led the investigation. He believes that organised criminal gangs were responsible, and he believes they were stealing these cars and selling them on to fund other criminal activities, including drug dealing and selling guns. Gareth, thank you very much. Detectives have reopened a murder case 35 years after the crime was committed. Mother of three, Josephine Bakshul, was last seen by her family on Tuesday, October the 29th, 1974. Despite a massive police investigation, her killer was never found. Bedfordshire and Hertfordshire Cold Case Review Unit will be poring over every line of evidence, all 1,900 statements taken during the original investigation, and subjecting material to forensic techniques not available at the time. Backing the new inquiry, three people for whom Josephine Backshaw was simply mum. She sang in the church choir. She ran a brownie pack. She left the family home that October evening for an appointment with a man about a part-time job. Her red Ford Cortina was later seen near a car park in Whittam. A woman matching her description was standing by it. At around 10.30 that evening, there was a possible sighting of her at what was then the Fountain Pub at Good Easter near Chelmsford. But three days later, police were summoned to the hamlet of Berry Green near Bishop Stortford. Mrs Bakshaw's body was found in a pond in this field, some 35 miles from her home. She'd been strangled. There was a rope around her neck. Her hands had been tied in front of her. She was wearing a wristwatch. It had stopped at ten minutes past eight. It's a, a sincere attempt to try and bring some justice to a horrific murder. My message is for anybody that has any information um, to come forward, um, contact me, um, talk to me. Um, no matter how insignificant you think that information may be, it may be important to me and the family of Josephine Baxhall. Our loving mother's life was taken from us when we were so young, and we've endured 35 years of not knowing why or by whom she was murdered. Not only was she denied the pleasure of seeing us grow up, we now have families of our own of whom she would have been extremely proud. They were just 12, 10 and 7 when they saw their mother for the last time. Now they talk to their own children about the granny they never got to see daring to hope that at last they can get answers to those questions. Who killed her and why? Kim Riley, BBC Look East, Hertfordshire. An eight-year-old girl from Wellingborough was forced to stay in a squalid makeshift hospital in Egypt for most of her holiday because officials thought she had swine flu. Ellie Kemp was grabbed by a guard after flying into Sharm El Sheikh Airport. After monitors showed she had a temperature, she and her father were taken into quarantine. They're now back home and when I spoke to them earlier, I asked about their ordeal and whether Ellie had actually been ill. 
they released us uh, Saturday evening. Uh, so we was there Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and the four nights. And all that time, um, she had no no fever, no other signs or symptoms, no coughing, no snort, uh, sore throat, no sneezing, absolutely no signs of any swine flu whatsoever, uh, nor did anybody else that we met at the hospital. And what kind of conditions were you kept in? Uh, absolute squalor. It was absolutely filthy. Um, but we were told to have a shower when we got first got there, but upon turning the shower on, uh, can you remember, Ellie? The, wa the water came out yellow and it, it smelt like raw sewage, so uh, we didn't have a shower. Uh, there was no hot water and um, there was also praying mantis, wasn't there, yeah. Yeah, in the room with us. Like we had to um, get out of the room. Ellie, what did you think of the place you, you were kept in? I thought it was horrible and disgusting. What was your wife thinking all this time, Chris? The, the first time I spoke to my wife is when I, I demanded a telephone call from the hospital to try and uh, phone the, the resort where she was staying. Um, and, and she was just in hysterics, as you, as you could imagine. At least, I mean, where we were was in um, pretty much squalor, but at least we, we had each other. Um, Sandra, my wife, didn't know what was going on, uh, and she was on her own, so she was um, inconsolable to be honest. And you've been back now for, for a few days. How have you felt about it since you've got home? And how is Ellie now? Um, Ellie's, Ellie's settled down a lot now, but she's still having nightmares. She's only an eight-year-old eight girl, and it's a lot of trauma for an eight-year-old girl to <coughs> go through. And we feel very angry with the travel agents for not warning us of the situation in Egypt uh, before we went out there, because if we'd have known, we, we wouldn't have booked. It would have been as simple as that. Chris and Ellie Kemp, well, this evening the tour operator First Choice told us they had no control over procedures carried out by the Egyptian authorities. They also say they advise tourists to look at the Foreign Office advice website before travelling. Coming up later in the programme.